blessed day, students, praying that you all are in good health, safe and sound in your own home. I am really glad that you still find time to listen to this video lesson, and that is highly appreciated. Anyways, today is another day to learn more about practical research, quantitative research in your case. So, let us start. This time, we will talk about the data collection procedure. After going through this lesson, you are expected to identify the sources of data as well as the methods in collecting data, recognize the data collection methods applied in sample scenarios, and draft a sample data collection procedure. In our last lesson, you have learned how to develop and construct a research instrument as well as the different types to establish its validity and reliability. Once you finally have your validated research instrument, you are now ready to collect data from your target respondents. You are going to learn various methods in collecting data as you go on with this lesson. Data collection refers to the process of collecting information from the target sources. In quantitative research, the data collection method relies on data collection instruments that fit various experiences into predetermined responses, producing results that are easy to summarize, compare, and generalize. Data collection allows you to gain first-hand knowledge and original insights into your research problems, according to Bandari in 2020. Before you begin collecting data, you need to consider the following factors. First, the aim of the research. Identify exactly what you want to achieve in your research. You can start by writing a problem statement. What is the practical or scientific issue that you want to address and why does it matter? The type of data that you will collect and the methods and procedures you will use to collect, store, and process the data. According to Faltado et al. 2017, in conducting research, you may use various sources of data as indicated here. First is the primary sources. They provide raw data which can be selected from the original source like experimental test result, questionnaire survey, interview, and observation. For the secondary sources, these are sources of data that have already been collected and published by someone else such as books, reports, journals, magazines, and newspapers, online articles, and others. According to Faltado et al. 2017 and Bellera et al. 2019, here are the various methods in collecting data Use in quantitative research. First is the structured interview. This method of collecting data involves the presentation of verbal replies from the respondents. In quantitative research, interview is more structured compared to the qualitative research. The researcher asks only the standard questions written in the questionnaire and nothing more. Then the researcher follows the same line of questions to ensure that the conducted interview is delivered in the same format and same order to every respondent. Here are the types of interviews that could be used by the researcher. First is the face-to-face -face interview. This is the most frequently used type of interview method, which directly acquires information from the respondents. And here are the advantages and disadvantages of this type of interview. For the advantages of face-to-face -face interview, it establishes rapport between researcher and participants. It gives chance to clarify ambiguous answer of the respondents and it has a high response rate compared to other types of interview. 
For the disadvantages, it is time-consuming and expensive to conduct, and it is impractical to use when we have a large good sample. The second type of interview is the telephone interview. It is used when the researchers have no time to meet the respondents personally. However, the response rate of the respondents is not as high as the face-to-face -face interview. For the advantages, again, for the advantages of telephone interview, it is less time-consuming and less expensive. It easily reaches respondents with a landline telephone, and it is fully automated using computer-assisting telephone interview that saves processing time. Its disadvantages are it is biased to those with telephone only. A little time is given to the respondents and the response rate is not as high as face-to-face -face interview. The next type of interview is a computer-assisted personal interview or CAPI or CAPI. It is a form of a personal interview wherein the interviewer brings along a laptop and it directly enters the information or response of the respondent to the database. Its advantages are it saves researchers in bringing hundreds of questionnaires and it saves time in processing data. While it's a disadvantage is it is expensive to set up and requires the interviewer to have a laptop. All right, so the next method in collecting data is through questionnaire or survey. It serves as a standard guide of the researcher in asking information from the respondents. This method helps the researcher to simplify and quantify the respondent's behavior. There are normally four sections in a questionnaire, namely respondents' identification data, it includes uh, the profile of the respondents, introduction, it may include the researcher's request for help, and then the purpose of the study. Instruction, it is the researcher's direction on how to move through the questionnaire, and the fourth section of the questionnaire is the inf information. It is the series of questions and statements that seek a response from the respondents. Here are the types of a questionnaire that could be used by the researcher. Paper pencil questionnaire. This is the traditional way of collecting data from the respondents. It can be sent to a large number of respondents. Advantages, respondents are truthful to the response because the responses are anonymous and it is less time-consuming and less expensive to conduct. For its disadvantage, some of the respondents do not return the questionnaire. The next type of questionnaire is the web-based questionnaire. It is an internet-based research where the respondents will receive an email that contains an address that would take them to a secure website containing the questionnaire. Its advantage it is much quicker than the paper-pencil method, while its disadvantages are it excludes people who do not have a computer or any gadget, and the accuracy of the respondents' responses is somehow uncertain. The next type of questionnaire is the mail questionnaire. It is usually distributed through mail, filled out and administered by respondents where they return this to the researchers through email. Usually, the mail has a packet containing a cover sheet and introductory message of what the questionnaire is all about. Its advantage is the respondents or the responses are all anonymous, making the respondents honest to their answers. While disadvantage, it has a higher return rate compared to the other types of questionnaire. The third method in collecting data is the structured observation. 
Structured observation is a way of collecting data by watching behavior, events, or noting physical characteristics in a natural setting. This method is usually used in the situation where the subjects are unwilling or unable to provide the needed data through survey or interview. Observation can be as follows. Overt observation. It is an observation where the respondents are aware that they are being observed. Covert observation. It refers to an observation where the respondents are unaware that they are being observed. Direct observation. The observation occurs during the interaction. And indirect observation. The observation occurs on the result of the interaction. Chetrin 2017 indicates the advantages and disadvantages of using observation method in collecting data. Advantages Behavior is naturally studied and the data is not distorted. It is cost effective and produce a valid result. And then subjects behave in a desired and natural manner. Its disadvantages are time-consuming and may involve a large amount of inactivity. And then the researchers need to be keen in observing all the elements needed in the study. Observation can make use of a recording sheet and checklist, which is the standardized way of collecting data. The fourth method in collecting data is test. This method provides a way to assess the subject's knowledge and capacity to apply knowledge to new situations. There are various forms of test depending on the needs of the researchers in the study. First is the norm reference test. It provides information on how the subject performs against a normative group. For example, self-assessment tool or SAT, IQ test, and then entrance exam. Criterion reference test, it determines whether the subjects have attained mastery of skills, for example, pre-test, post-test, and quizzes. And then proficiency test, it provides an assessment about the level of skill attainment and includes standards for performance at varying levels of proficiency, for example, English proficiency test. The data collection procedure is the step-by-step -step process on how the researchers collect data from the respondents using one or a combination of the data collection methods discussed in this lesson. For you to have a clear view of data collection procedure, let's consider this example. The research title is the level of satisfaction of the senior high school students in Rizal High School on the Nutriband product. Data gathering procedure goes like this. The researchers had allotted time and effort in constructing their survey questionnaire to serve its projected respondents. The survey questionnaire was constructed using appropriate questions modified from related research and individual questions formed by the researchers. The survey questionnaire was divided into three parts, which were related to the respondent's perception of the Nutriband product. Likert scale was utilized to determine the weight of the respondent's satisfaction on the product. After the validation of the instrument through the help of experts, the researchers seek the approval of the research advisor and the class advisor of the target participants before conducting the survey. Upon the approval of the request, the researchers distributed the survey questionnaire to the selected participants of the study. Participants were given time to respond and then the researchers collected the survey questionnaire two days after the distribution. The gathered data from the respondents were tallied, computed, and interpreted accordingly. Along with the collected primary data, the researchers also made use of secondary data in the form of published articles and literature to support the results of the survey.
that ends our lesson today. Thank you for listening and see you next time.